Good morning. Thank you for joining Coffee and Convo Houston, live with R.E. and Chosen. Today's special guest, F.D. Sparkman. Good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Convo Houston, live with R.E. and Chosen. I'm your host, R.E., ready for peace. We have Chosen and our special guest, F.D. Sparkman. So, how's everybody's morning? Ooh wee! <laughs> now that I had a little bit of this coffee, I guess I'm ready for a little convo then, huh? Hi, <laughs> FD. How about you this morning? Well, I'm fine. You're fine. Yeah. I don't like well, that word. Fine. Been challenging. Forty-eight hours. <laughs> All right. You, you, so, you didn't have a problem with that word when you were younger, and the guys were whistling. You know what? And then I learned that it meant freak out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. So now oh, I have an issue with it. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All right. So let's get into our recap of last week, recognizing temptation. Chosen. <laughs> All right. So if you didn't tune in last week, just like Ari said, last week we talked about recognizing temptation. Temptation, that one thing that always gets us into that thing that we don't need to be in. <laughs> uh, many signs of <laughs> many signs of temptation. Um, you know, we one of the things we talked about, like, you know, if you were if you're an alcoholic and you're coming out of it. One of the signs of that the that, that the enemy might be getting you drive by the drive you drive down the street and the alcohol and the, and, the, and the liquor store is like right down the street and you like hmm you know it won't hurt to go get that little <laughs> swallow you know what I'm saying it's like every time you choose to do good guess what's right there you know evil. so it's just a little thing happening evil you know what I'm saying it's, the temptation always comes. When you recognize that what your habit or what you that thing that you are charmed by, uh, when you recognize that that is not good for you and it's detrimental to your growth and it's stopping you from reaching to your your goals, it's mm-hmm. gonna hit you real real. So that's basically what we was talking about last week. Um, and like always, you can always go to the YouTube channel and find all of our previous discussions, all the conf, all the convos. I was about to say. All the coffee. I was gonna say you need, you know, you need to have you some coffee. If you need to have you some coffee along with the convo, hey, all of those conversations are right there at your disposal whenever you get ready to listen to them. I promise it's gonna be something in there for you. All right. Now today's topic. We were uh, uh, talking about giving up. Now, you tuned if you tuned in last week, you saw we had many, many technical difficulties. And so that that sparked, um, as FD say, when we're talking about something that's important to that's really helping you move to the next level, there there's always some type of interference to prevent you from getting that message. So that pushed us into talking about giving up today. So we wanted to, to bring out, discuss how to, 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 persevere through through these uh, oppositions. Correct me if I'm, I'm missing it here. Um, sometimes all is really needed is just to press in. Majority of the time I'll say it, it's just a press in. Now giving up it means just really walking away, giving up your control, uh, deciding it's not for you, it's not the right decision for you, all because you've run into some type of adversity. Um, FD, you wanna go ahead and take the reins? Well, many people give up for many different reasons, and usually everything is designed to push your buttons till you get to the point to where you're saying, okay, you throw your hands up and you walk away from something that's probably going to be good for you or something that's going to be better for you than what you already have. Most people give up because it's the only thing that they know how to do. It's like running away. I have an issue with running away from things. Huh. Because as a child, you know, I started planning my first runaway when I was five and executed at 12, but continued to execute until I was grown. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so, Interesting. 
when things get too hot for me and I have to watch myself, I have a tendency to try to run away from whatever it is, whether it be good or whether it be bad. So I have to keep myself in check and stay where I am and, you know, remain vigilant against what I know to be one of my weaknesses. I mean, one of the things I love about the military is I got those two, I guess you could call them chants that I go by because of uh, what my unit model used to be. And one of them was, was behind these doors are the soldiers that make the impossible a reality. And the mm -hmm. other one was nice stalkers don't quit. Well, once I've learned to do the impossible, the biggest problem I had was trying to quit. <laughs> okay. Because so go ahead, go ahead. Because I, I'm pretty sure most of us deal with that. You know, when, when it gets too hot, we, we're ready to run. When the, the pressure is on, it, it you know, we ready to, to just get out of the way, go somewhere else, duck and cover. Yeah. I mean, you, you got the running away thing. I'd say the most dangerous thing there is, is giving up on yourself or giving up on your dream or whatever. And most of those attacks are pretty much, I'd say, custom made just for you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find yourself in a position where if one more thing like this happened to me, I'm done. I quit. You're always going to be pushed to your limit and you're always going to be slammed down really hard for a moment. And it's like, for some people, it's months. For some people, it's years. For some people, it could be 35 minutes. It just depends on the situation, the calling, and your purpose. Okay. So... You're saying, is it, it's like that, that, that saying, uh, fight or flight. Yeah. But sometimes okay. giving up is because most people, when you don't see progression, mm -hmm. you tend to quit. So you have to be very discerning when it comes to uh, progression, because when People have certain things in mind. And that's why I always say temper your expectations. Because if you don't see the type of progression that you're looking for, people tend to say, okay, nothing is going to happen. They don't wait around long enough to find out that, okay, all good, it's going to change. I mean, if you look at Formula 409, they, they screwed up 408 times before they got it right. Oh, wow. Is that how they got their name? <laughs> yes. <laughs> huh, awesome. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. So they messed up. Well, they didn't get it the 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 formula into the 409th attempt. Exactly. That's awesome. You have, you have Thomas Edison. He had 110 failed experiments before he got the light bulb. Mm. Chosen. Yeah. What do you have to say about it? Giving up. Uh <clears throat> If you don't like starting over, then don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know what I'm saying? It's just as simple as day. If you don't like starting over, give up. Don't don't give up. Like, don't quit. Uh, but sometimes you have to go back to the basics. But that doesn't necessarily mean you know give up. It's like a rebranding sometimes. And uh, what is it that uh, re uh, recurring? Like like you mm -hmm. know your your recurring thing. Um, Sometimes people hit brick walls and sometimes people uh, come, like Frederick said, you know, you got to find a way to push through them barriers. And it can be, you know, sometimes that process can be, can be immense. You know what I'm saying? I've gone through it many times. Mm. But one thing about it is there's going to be something that calls you to, uh, there's going to be something that calls you. It won't be. It won't it won't be a teacher. It won't be your mama. It won't be your dad. It won't be a best friend or nothing. It's going to be something ethereal. It's going to be something that just won't let you go. And that's okay. what's, that's what's probably going to get you to. Uh, <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be spiritual. And that's probably going to be something that's going to be the thing that really gets you out of it, because there are certain positions that the way the world works, there's certain positions that you will get put in that'll make you wake up. Remember what we talked about last night? No, I slept since then. 
what you told me, you said it took a fall. <laughs> you like, so it ah, took a fall. Yes. <laughs> I told you that it just took a fall for you to learn, for you to actually get that that revelation that you needed. It, it took more than a fall. I mean, but it started out with that yeah, fall. But it, you know. but, but it started, well, you know, there were things that, you know, that lead up to that. Because sometimes you can, you know, you know, the one thing that I say that I love about, I love about how the most high works. And of course, you know, mm -hmm. you can't talk about anything that you can't talk about anything without without, you know, giving due to the most high, because the most high can tell you, hey, this is what, this is, this is for you. And you're going to get it. You know how your mom or your dad be like, you're going to do this. Yeah. One way or another, you're going to do it. If I got to, if, if I got to take you by the hand and take you to it, <laughs> you're going to do it. And, okay. and, and and there's going to be a point and there's going to be a point to where it's going to be like, you're going to get there and you're going to see what it is. And then you're going to be like, you know what? I shouldn't have I shouldn't have taken this much for me to do this. You'll come out of it. So giving up. I mean, you just it's giving up, you just drop it some. and walk away. It's, it's not a, really it's not an option for anybody. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's really not an option for anybody, but uh, well, go ahead. Go ahead, Frederick. You nodding your head. No, I was just, I was just shaking my head to what you were saying. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, really, it's not an option. Giving up is not an option for anybody. Um, man, y'all know how I am. You two know my mind, and y'all know where I'm about to go. Uh, what movie? What up. show? Y'all know I got to go to Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Ball. Y'all know I gotta y'all know I gotta go to Dragon Ball. So uh so Kakarot Goku, he uh he's faced with the greatest one of the greatest fights. This there's this adversary that even his sensei, even his teacher told him if you ever come across this dude, avoid him at all costs. Do not do don't keep your name out his mouth. So okay. <laughs> don't come, don't let him catch you in the street type thing. And this is the guy that taught him and got him ready for what he was about to face. This is the person that taught him everything that he that he needed to have at that moment. So he gets there to the place. Now on this place, that this place where he is at, his um his son is there, his friends are there, and now it's all resting on him. So he comes across this guy and he has to uh, you know, he gotta square up with him. He get to the point to where this dude just can't hit. He can't hit him, you know. Even though, even though his sensei told him not to do it, he still had to. So it was led to the point to where it got down to where the dude was about to drown. Mm. And I mean, adversary had this dude under the water, like mm. under the water, drowned. And he drowned him. And but the will, the things that he had to fight for. The ultimate goal and what he what he could not lose was stronger than what that enemy was doing to him. And he found a way to persevere. So what it is. So when you find a way to persevere and then your uh, resolve is better than what is trying to get you to give up on your dreams. When you find that, then that's when that's when you you able to, you know, you able to rise, you know, like the Phoenix through the ashes. You able to rise. I had to go there, y'all. I had to go. There. <laughs> All right, so we have a comment. First and foremost, Leroy says, good morning, fellas. Every trial is a test of strength and perseverance that is used to make us stronger. Instead of focusing on the difficulties during the process, out of faith, we should focus on the rewards after all the struggles, blood, sweat, and tears are over. What is your expected outcome pertaining to your goals or desires? This, I would say, co coincide with what you were saying earlier. Go back to your why. Go back to your why. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you maintain focus on your why, and I would say FD here, the promise of God as well, what he promised you, you, you will persevere. You know, giving up, you have to understand is a tactic, as we've stated before in, in other episodes, it's a tactic, it's a tactic to get you out of your uh destiny. True, false. Right, wrong. Okay, FD. 
what else are you going to throw at us with this uh, giving up? You have your, let's see, you said to Galatians 6, 9, and let us not be weary and well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not which is basically the same thing we're saying in layman's terms, correct? Yeah. I had an old man once tell me, he said, you can give out, but you can never give in. So you can be exhausted and everything else, and you could fall out, but you can't choose to give up. <laughs> mm. I mean, sometimes you get pushed beyond your means to bear, and you can fall out but you can't give up. When you get pushed beyond your means to bear, then the only thing you can do is wait on the most high. Uh, your change is going to come, like Sam Cooke would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now, okay, so let, let's address this. Sometimes there's a miscon misconception that the, the journey is going to be easy. Now, if you remember Nation, Nation used to tell me, it's not the destination, it's the journey. All that philosophical stuff sounds great when you guys say it, and, and I love you for it, but I'm still a You soul. know what? You woo. <laughs> and the easiest I'm thing still drinking my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest thing for me is gut it out. I mean, endure hard, all hardness as a good soldier. Things are going to come at you. You got to take them hits, take them licks, and hold on. Or uh, like, like Yeshua says in the book of Revelations, hold on to what you have until I come. I mean, as long as you're not losing everything, ah, yes. this one. you hold on to what you have until your change comes. Mm, excuse so, me. A lot okay. of it is mental fortitude or setting your face as flint. Withstanding mm -hmm. everything there is until there's nothing left to withstand. Now, I, you know, I'm going to always take this to relationships because sometimes you just know when to throw in a towel. Sometimes you just know when to throw in a towel. Okay. But, so we're not, we're not saying if, if it's basically killing you, stressing you out to the point where you, you, your health is bad and, and your peace is gone, just stick it out. You Be wise in those decisions. What we're saying is... If you if you started a business, being self-employed, being an entrepreneur, it's it's hard. It is hard. In fact, chosen you you told me last night that I should adjust my words when I when I mention it. It it's hard work. Okay, some days you're gonna have the strength to to deal with it. You're gonna want to jump up and just run run for it. And then there are days where it's gonna be so hard you're just gonna want to throw in the towel. You're going to feel like no matter what I do, I keep running into this wall. Go ahead. It look like you want to say something. Chosen. Um, it, it, when you said, when you just then, when you used the word hard, and me, I think me and you were getting ready to talk about this. Y'all got to understand something about me and Ari. Okay. Me and Ari, we got, we, we 30 years deep in, in friendship. So we, we get a chance to chop it up a lot. So uh, remember last night when I told you how uh, I was told um, it's not hard. Like when my mother told me, she was like, it's not hard. You know, you just mm -hmm. ask yourself this question. Do you think that whenever we say something is hard, is it really hard? Or is it just because um, the weather's bad? Okay. <laughs> There's something that I got to do. Okay. But it's raining outside. OK, you don't want to get wet, but you you don't if it wasn't if it was sunny outside, it would be easier to or mm -hmm. I would I would I would much rather I would mu I would much rather be doing what I need to do when it's sunny outside or if it's cold or if it's too hot. Could it just be the weather that's just making the conditions um, not what you want them to be? There's some people that don't mind going out in the rain. There's some people don't mind being out in the cold and some people that don't mind being with, out when it's hot. So would you say that something is hard? It's not necessarily hard. It's just, hey, these conditions, I don't feel like working in these in these conditions. They're not preferable. FD, not that preferable. would be the same as a soldier, right? In the military. Cool. <laughs> I remember when I went to the Air Force. Have you ever I noticed that? I remember when I went to the Air Force. 
And that was one of the things that the the, the sergeants used to tell us, you know, uh, about how people quit. And they would look for any and every way to actually get out and get discharged because they did not want to continue the process. And that's just basic training. That's just basic <laughs> training. So, so what I'm saying is, so what I'm saying is this. Have you ever, have you realized that when those, when those uh, conditions are, 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 are not to your preference or not to your liking and you still go ahead and do what you needed to do and at the end of it, you realize one thing. Dang, really, all I had to do was show up. Mm-hmm. So Sweat it's like, equity is what I told you last night. Huh? Sweat equity is what I said last night. Sweat equity. That's the first time I ever heard that. I was like, <laughs> what? I like, the who the Honda what? Sweat equity. Okay. But that's the thing. It's like, okay, so it's hard to get out of the bed. We say hard. So would we like to say, since you know how I am with words, I say words are spells. So we uh-huh. start learning how to take certain words out of our vocabulary. It'll be a whole lot better. Cause have you had that time where you just felt like you couldn't move, but you kept telling yourself, okay, get up. I'm finna get up. Uh-huh. I'm about to get up. I'm about to get up. And then you gather that strength when you come out of that, when you come out, however, I, I don't have, I don't feel like I have the luxury for the eight hour fast no more. I get like maybe four hours, maybe, <laughs> maybe four or five hours of sleep in, in that fast. But when you come out of that fast, it's like, Okay, I need to get up. And then maybe you don't feel like getting up. Once again, you don't feel like getting up. The bed got you holding on to you tighter than your true love. And it just make you want to stay there. And you're like, I don't feel I need to get up. I need to get up. But the more you tell yourself you need to get up, eventually you're going to get up. But I bet you if you sit up and say, okay, your circumstances. Yeah, if you speak into your circumstance and putting your own energy into yourself, it's going to cause you to get up. It's going to cause you to get up. It's going to cause you to rise. So that's why I say we be, we have to be careful with whatever, what it is that we say and how we say what it is. So it's like, I, don't, I really don't like the word. Every time I hear somebody say it's hard to do, it's not easy. And I'm like, at the end of the day, when you get ready to, when you finally push through the way you are feeling, you realize all I had to do was show up. Okay. That's, that's when the battle is inward. You said that's mm-hmm. when the battle is inward? Yes. Wouldn't you agree that most battles are inward? For some people, yes. For some people, it's usually external. Me, mostly, it's usually external. Hmm. Now, I want to say something. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Fred. Go ahead. He had his point. Yeah. Well, you got to remember, like I was saying about those two units I had behind these doors of the soldiers that make the impossible a reality. I'm very tenacious. And I usually, because I was a night stalker, I can't give up. I can't quit. I'm going to keep looking for new ways to get to adapt and overcome. I'm going to look for different ways to get this done. I'm an overcomer. But when there are external outside influences that halt you, that stop you, that present that wall, that uh, are attacking you while you're trying to get this done, then you have to learn how to persevere and then you have to learn how to either get through that person, around that person, or that particular thing. If it's a job that's stopping you, then you need to find a better job. Mm. If it's uh, a person that keeps harassing you, or let's say it's a wrong friend, then it's time to cut slings. You have to do what it takes to make your road easier. You know, I pray for ease because like Chosen said, not everything has to be so hard. And when you're going through something physical, you have these physical attacks that are coming at you. Then there's always a mental or spiritual way out. I would say that has very much so to do with peace more than it does ease. Well, not always, because you can sit there. When you worked on a machine and you come in there and your leg hurting and your back is hurting and the biggest machine in the plant come out, <laughs> go out on you. <laughs> you finna work hard. <laughs> you, 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 finna do some, you finna get put in some sweat equity as you put it. <laughs> but see, look, but see, look, but see, look, but see, look, we sit up and say, we say that, okay, one thing that I know that makes it mentally it, may, it has me comfortable in a mental state is this. 
if I go out here, if, okay, if I'm working on myself, if mm -hmm. I'm used to doing six, if I'm used to do, if I'm used to doing sixty push ups, sixty crunches, and, and, and sixty squats, if I'm used mm -hmm. to doing that, and then eventually to get to that point, I had to push myself. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And now that I'm at that point and now it starts feeling easier. So it might, I might push that 60 up to 65 until I start feeling some strain, until I start feeling like something's working. So sometimes with your circle, OK, at my job, I'll say this. It's every time every, every time a plane comes in. I would like for that. I would like for that uh, that, that, that load with only that, with, uh, that load with only 20 bags to come off. And in and it's small bags. But every now and then I might get that load that got this motorized wheelchair that weighs uh -huh. like six pounds. And yeah, it's it's hard, but after it, it, it's go ahead. Oh no, I think he's oh, speaking to me. <laughs> okay, so yeah, he was I would like to he had a question. Oh, okay, go, go ahead. So yeah, so uh um so I would so every now and then I might get that that load that has that 600 pound wheelchair in it. So by the time I get done and I'm figuring out, OK, how am I going to get this done without this help? So by the time I figured that puzzle out, it was no, you know, it was a little less strength. Yeah, of course, it's heavier than the bags because they're bad boy 600 pounds. But now mm -hmm. that I've devised it to get it down where no one gets hurt. And yeah, it was heavy. But was it impossible? Was it? You know, it wasn't hard. It was something that just tested my limits. So I get not only do I not only do I test out how strong I am uh, physically. It's like now I have another way. I have a, a contingency for that for when it shows up again. So, you know, that, that that's that's pretty much what it is that I so want to put out there. That basically, was, so basically, these oppositions are puzzles to solve. Yeah, they puzzles to, to solve. The they puzzles. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they just puzzle. Sometimes that puzzle is going to be blood, sweat, and tears. Sometimes, like Chosen says, it's figuring out a way to get this job done easy. Work smarter, not harder. Hmm. But, but you also yeah, have, right. okay, let's say you need three people to get a job done. Okay. You got two guys that are motivated, ready to go, and then you got one guy that wants to go over here and he don't want to do that. Mm. <laughs> I deal with so, it a lot. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now you got the issue of how are we going to get this solved done in the appropriate amount of time? Because I got Jake over here that don't want to do what he wants, what he's supposed to do. So, so that doubles the load for everyone, for the other two that's willing to work. Correct. I mean, in life, it's always going to be one person that don't want to. What's that? Uh, <laughs> it's always one. Dude that was on life can't, can't get right. <laughs> can't get right. Can't get right. Gonna, yeah, you're always going to have one of them. And the problem with that is, you know, you have to have a, you have to be, keep your eye on the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what do you want to do? This job is not going to go away. I need you to muster whatever motivation you have. Let's get this done. Let's get it over with so we can go back to screwing off or whatever it was we was doing. But no matter what, you procrastinated is not going to stop this job needing to be done. So I need you to put on your big boy pants. They come over here and help us. And we're trying to make it as easy for you as possible. But you're going to get over here. And you're going to help us. And you're going to get this done. Interesting. Okay, so basically it's a lesson in perseverance. Mm -hmm. Now, for those, for, there are some out there that just give up in everything that they try. What would you tell them? Especially, let, let's just say your child has signed up for something at school and it's done some type of, uh, what I forgot, elective, okay? And they go in and they don't feel that they're good at it, whether it be football, basketball, uh, track, even Spanish or French. And they always want to just, I, okay, I'm, I'm not good at this. I want to drop it. I'm not good at this. I want to drop it. Good enough is another. Okay. Now, go ahead. When when you sit there and you run a race and you come in third or fourth, you're not good enough. Now, when you uh run a race and you're the last person every single race, then yeah, you can change your elective. 
<laughs> you would actually yeah, tell so them that, I, I, I would say no, no, see, no, what it is is okay, you try things until you, you try, it's trial and error. You try things um, until you figure out that one thing that you're good at, but you have to know what that pool is. For instance, uh, I uh, I played football. I was aight. You know what I'm saying? I was aight. But the thing about it is, is it didn't resonate me as much as music did. And, and, and when I think about how it is with music, I think about what it is that I, I think about what it is that resonated. It was like every time I would hear a song, I would get this feeling. Every time I played football and got on it, I didn't really get that feeling. So okay. whenever you so so I guess it's I, I can't say it's different. It's the same when because we all were children at one point in time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we wanted to do things. Sometimes we wanted to do things to impress or make our parents proud, you mm -hmm. know, because because, you know, that's that's who we looked up to. You know what I mean? Or that's who we went to for everything. We want to make our parents proud um, until we figured out what it is that we liked to do. Because, you know, right. as, as us, sometimes we grew up, we grew up being told uh, we don't know what's good for us. Oh, my yes. your mama know, your dad know, they know what's good for you. Yes. Um, the only person that actually knows what's good for you in a specific sense is the most high. Now, the most high. That might be talking about what's good for you in general, but even that, some people have turned that upside Can't down wrong. because you got to realize right. that you have to know your limitations. You have to know, yes. like you said, good at this and good at that. Now, mm -hmm. so you have, a, you have certain terms in life where you have to develop skills because you completely suck at it, but then you find out that you're actually good at it once you develop your skills. Whereas mm -hmm. you have what's called talents and you have skills that you can yeah. uh, skill acquisition. So if this is a talent, so, it's gonna be easier. I don't have to put so much work in. But let me stop over talking. You go for it. What you gonna say? <laughs> no, nah, you good. Yeah. So no, because what I wanted to say was what I wanted to say was as a parent, you have to that's why you have to watch your children. You know, and, and Isaiah said, and a child shall lead them. That's part of that mm -hmm. scripture. And a child shall lead them. You're supposed to watch your children. To see what they gravitate towards and what they gravitate towards is what they want to do. It might it might seem pointless to you. It might be it might. Ooh, excuse me. It might go. It might go against what you felt like it was. Because You know how you get so many people that want to be like, OK, well, dad, he, he worked on these cars and he got this car business. And then that baby's baking in the womb. And you go and you buying onesies with wrenches on it and 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 and, and cars and <laughs> dad's little mechanic. And then when you get and when he come out, you know, he might want to do something totally different than what it is. You have to put like, your touch a wrench. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah, he don't, don't want to even touch a wrench. That's why that's why you see the movies. That's why when you see the movies, it'd be like, Dad, that's what you want, Dad. And and, and it's mm -hmm. like, well, when are, when are you gonna tell dad that you're not interested in this? You see how flawed that is. So mm. if you have so you have to really watch your children and set aside what it is you feel like you want for your child as far as what they as far as their talent. Of course, you want the best for your child. You want the best mm. for them. But you have to look at what it is that they that they gravitate towards what it is and then throw put them in that and, you know, put them in to see how they fare with it. And then if it, if it doesn't work or whatever, and if you start seeing the if you start seeing them flourish. I don't like to use the word competition, but if you start seeing them flourish other than the competition or whatever, and they feel like this isn't what I want to do or it's not challenging, then that's when you're supposed to take time out to uh, show them their accomplishments in it and say, OK, what we're not going to do is we're not going to quit. You know, we'll finish this task and then we'll look to something else or something like that, because that's when you start teaching. That's when you start teaching that give up, giving them the reason to feel like they can give up is when they feel just like they don't a little hard. It's getting a little you hard say because, giving up because of the challenge. They're looking because to give up the because challenge. of the challenge. So, like, look with a challenge, and, and 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 if you let them, and if you just let them quit because or let them stop because they feel like it's too hard, then that's how you teach people to give up. So, like in, in my case, I wasn't given. You know, music was all in me, but mm -hmm. I was told like old school. You know, saying, "Well, you need to find something." Uh, that's going to get you through life. You need to find something. Let that be a backup. You need a backup. And this, this, and that. How many people have you heard? 
How many people have you heard talk about a backup? Tyler Perry talked about being homeless. All the great people or what we think is great, the people that started their old stuff, they had nothing. Either that or they lost nothing. They talk about so much about how there were days I wanted to give up. There were days I wanted, but they had nothing to lose after that. They gave up everything to do what it is, to pursue what it is that they needed to pursue. And they knew that if I don't get up and go get it, ain't nobody going to get it for me. That's true. Huh. So you sit huh. up and you think, giving up, is it really an option? No, there's no option. You either going to live or you're going to die. And that's in the physical oh. and a mental sense. Well, the problem is, is that giving up is actually an option for some people because that's the only thing they know. That, like you say, they're taught this from they're the moment taught. that they grow up. Okay, the, when you sit there, and I hate to say this, but you know, you go look at the hood sometimes or whatever, <laughs> and you got this little <laughs> child that want to go do this, and you like, "Mama, I can't do it." It's, it's okay, son. It's okay. Go ahead, and sit down. Just because my adversity is a bother to you, <laughs> because you have some people that will put that's right your adversity as an inconvenience because I don't really want a parent. So uh. I don't really want to take the time to help you muscle or master this particular thing, muscle through or master this particular thing. Since I'm lazy, I'm going to not parent you. And you're going to always be a quitter because now you have that automatic habit in your head. Every time I face adversity, it is okay for me to quit because mama said uh. so. Uh. Now, see, daddy going to send you excuse. back out there and make you pack this shit. <laughs> yes. My father did that. I had in a. Some uh, cases. Oh, go ahead. I wanted to write. And my mother said I needed a backup plan something that would give me what is it job security you know there's no such thing <laughs> really and right. it, it's not and i really didn't think i was very good in math and then my father showed me just just showed me that i it was a, a talent that i really didn't tap into didn't know that i had you know so then math became my thing so writing and math became both of my my go tos. So I, That's I weird. what you usually only get one. You either get the writing thing and you suck at math, <laughs> or you get the math thing and you suck at English. You're weird. You got them both. <laughs> I got them both. I, I and I ended up working in finance and I ended up being a writer. So I. It, those were my, that's even my backup plan. That was my backup plan. You know, if I didn't do the writing, I was going to work in, in, in a financial field. So, but I brought that up to say one was not being nurtured. Another one was like nurtured. 20, Go ahead. 20, 20 minutes on this show. I'm talking to somebody else. <laughs> but like 20 more minutes on the show. about but not you, giving but. up, this is what we want it we want you to understand just because it's hard in the beginning or you perceive it to be hard and i, I think that really comes down to discipline is what we're really saying right go ahead chosen that's right it, that, that is it is it's, it comes down to discipline and it also comes you know what i did not understand i did not understand the word grind like in the sense when everybody says get back on my grind or when the people say you yeah. know i gotta get back on my grind. i didn't know I, I, when i looked at i just thought maybe okay it was working overtime or whenever you get it you get it you keep going until until you until it's time to quit but really what it is really what it is is um it's it's more going till you get there. Like 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 okay like like you could keep doing. Okay, you know I gotta bring something up. All right, <laughs> you remember how many used to go shoot things? How we play? You know we we yes. would, we would play the game, and we would go do these. We would go do the strikes, and you go in there and they talk about the grind. Well, the grind is you keep going until you get that which you are attaining. You know what I mean? So it's like you are going until you keep getting. It. Like okay man, like we did like fifty strikes and this weapon still didn't drop. So you don't know when the weapon gonna drop, but I bet you if we had stopped that strike and we stopped and we we, we quit, that next strike that we ran could have been that strike that the weapon dropped or the piece of equipment that we wanted dropped. 
So basically what I'm saying is like one of the key things to not giving up is you keep on putting it out there. You keep on doing it because you just never know that day might be, you know, that it could be day, the next day that you finally get what it is you were, you, you were looking mm-hmm. for. You, mm-hmm. to that. And again, that's perseverance, pushing through, pressing through. But see, through. that's the one thing for you. That's that, that's it. But it also, but that also correlates to something for to to hoping for, like what what you hoping for. That gives you something to hope Hold for. It's like you have until I come. Mm-hmm. Okay. You keep on doing it, like okay, let me do it, dog. Because if I put this, if I put this video up, if I put this video, it's like I might I might feel like not recording this video or singing this thirty five seconds of singing, and putting this on Instagram, and I'm like, dog. If I guess what, if I put this up here. What's the chances of Babyface seeing it? What's the chances of Grimey mm-hmm. Night seeing it? If I don't, what and and, and and I don't put it up there. And next day you get on the uh, social media or whatever it is, and it was like they said, "Look, man, I, I just happened to be on Instagram, or I just happened to be on this, and I found such and such, and you didn't post that day. That could have been you." So it's like the thing. I'm glad you hopeful. brought up social media. Okay, I'm glad okay, you brought that up <laughs> because. <laughs> Even welcome. if we take what we do, we've been doing this, what, it'll be a year next month, okay? Yeah. And yeah, we've example. looked at our viewership, we've looked at uh, our topics, um, metrics, and we, we see that we have an audience. We do have an audience. We have people that are um, true fans of Coffee and Convo Houston. Now, you have situations where there are some episodes where our viewership is extremely low. Okay. We could have easily said, you know what? No one's listening to us. No one is uh, taking the time out to, uh, to, to actually watch the show. And we could have given up months ago, but we've been doing this for a year. Consistency. We've been doing this one on a year now. What you just said about putting it on social media are not putting it on social media. What if someone sees it? What if someone wants to pick it up? What if we miss that boat by deciding to quit? By not, not by just that one day. That is. Go ahead, Frederick. Time and chance happens to all men. At the right Mm -hmm. time, somebody will always come along that will notice you, help you, or something. If you look at every Every hard luck movie there's ever been, if you look at every musical thing there's ever been, I mean, if you look at Barry White and Smokey Robinson, they got together and all of these things, they got turned down by everybody. It ended up being that he had to go to his family to get the money, but only after they had actually put their idea together, done everything that they had to do to get everything together until money was the only issue. Sometimes you got to push through until you have nothing left to do and then your time will come you know how many okay. record labels you know how many record labels told turn down anita baker mm. she no, went to four different record labels she went to four different record labels every last one of them said the same thing they said she could not sing mm. anita baker is responsible anita baker. anita baker is responsible for almost every uh, good relationship. Some of us are here because of Anita Baker. Yep. Uh, some, of you, <laughs> some, some people got proposed to by Anita Baker. Uh-huh. And some, yep. I, I mean, shoot, my cousin, my cousin even sung one of Anita Baker's uh, uh, songs at, at their wedding. Some, some, you know, some people were joined by Anita Baker, and it took four people. It was four people that that didn't believe in her or what she had to do, but because she didn't quit. She's who she is now. And, you know, I love me some Anita. Me too. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do our bullet points, y'all. And at this point, if you want to expound on it, please do. Now, Chosen, your key thing is if you hate starting over, don't give up. If you hate starting over, don't give up. If you don't want to go back to it, it's like, you look, okay, like, when I was in music and I took that ten year hiatus, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I took that. I took that ten year hiatus, 
And it was like, okay, I thought about, it, man, I got it's just, it's just like whenever you wake up in the morning, you don't feel like it's like, dog, I get up, I gotta start back vocalizing like I did every day, which I should already be doing, and I gotta go find people, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, and, and it's back to the basics. But you know, you gotta shake that rust off, and that's part of starting mm -hmm. up. You know, that's part of starting over, shaking that rust off, and then remembering if you still know how to do this. Um, that making sure the engine can still crank up. You know, most people don't like doing that, but if you don't like doing that, then don't give up. That's basically it. Sometimes it's you, you can be more fortunate than others, uh, you know, in, in whatever it is you do. Sometimes, it, well, I like, oh, 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 forget that. What I really meant to say is think about it like this. We usually always say, if you don't use it, you lose it. I don't uh -huh. look at it like that. I don't look at it like that. I look at it as, I look at it it's it's dormant. You have to re, you have to reawaken it. You have to waken it up. You have to wake it up again. Cause you don't you don't right, lose right. it. It just goes to sleep. And you gotta you and you have to uh to do it. Like I uh when I came back from that hiatus, I had not performed anywhere in over a decade. Back in 20, 2019, 2018, 2019, I hadn't performed in over a decade. I went in front of management. I went from people I did not know. And that was the first time I ever performed on stage. And the only thing that they had to say about my performance was I didn't have anything physical to give them. Like I didn't have any uh, I didn't have anything to support my brand. Then I didn't know because back then I didn't even know about how to create that brand market all yourself. i knew how to do yeah. yeah to market myself i didn't know i didn't know the ins and outs on how people do it now so i just said man you know i'm just gonna get up here and go see how far i get and, and take an assessment of my skills because i've been out of this for like 10 years and over for over 10 years so uh after that i just picked it up so it wasn't so much as saying starting over was bad it was because hey i learned something but to get up and be like Oh, I gotta go do this. I gotta go do that. It can be, it can kind of be daunting. But if you don't like starting over, then don't give up. If you don't want okay. that feeling, then don't give up. Just keep going. All right. And FD. Every setback can be a leg up because in the music industry, as what I've seen, is that you guys learn this. If you look at everything that Prince went through, he was actually starting the new way that everything was done. He was actually putting all these things into place. Nobody understood what he was doing because he was well ahead of his time. And he was the one telling them, when 2000 hit, people are gonna be ordering my music online. I don't have to use you no more. I don't have to go through you no more. Everything changes with time. All um, right. Yes. That's what you're saying. <laughs> That's exactly what you're saying. Okay, so basically, adopt an I won't quit mindset. Okay, no matter what opposition you run into, your goal is should be problem solving. How do I get on the other side of this? How do I reach the next destination so I can continue my journey and, you know, help me get to where I need to be? So, Having that I won't quit mindset will help you solve those problems that you run into, you know. All right. And any moment that you feel as though you want to give up or you should give up, need to give up, whatever you believe at that moment, go back to the reason why. Why did you choose to do this? What was the importance for? Why was it so important to you? Always remember that, that, that story that got you there. OK, um, that's all I have to say about this. You know, know your why and have a I don't quit mindset. I mean, perseverance. I'm, I've been told that a lot. I, I don't give up. And those that know me know I don't give up. <laughs> I might find uh, some with some choice words to say to someone uh, so they don't give up. You know, I'm that person that put a kick in your behind. Make sure you keep focused and pull you through. And that's another thing. Make sure you have a support team. That is very, very much so important. If you ever feel as though your back is against the wall, it is important to have someone to uh, call and talk to, to help remind you 
on why you started. We have a comment here. Leroy says, every desired dream is a journey filled with bumpy roads, hills, and mountains. The key is to focus on the finished project and not the tedious hardships along the way. God has given us the strength to overcome and be victorious in all of our trials. These trials give us the chance and the ability to learn all of what we need to know to be overachievers in our desired fields. We will be placed in a position to learn all the ins and outs in our dreams and desired goals. I agree with that. FD? One of the things that I've learned about what I do is waiting on the most high. When you've done everything you can do, stand. And that young man that came and interrupted the show, I've been working on him for years. <laughs> and uh, he has some issues that he wants to discuss with me or whatever, but he's finally waking up and he's out there trying to pursue what he actually needs to do rather than make excuses. I believe oh, Okay, that so he's, he's trying to apply the knowledge that you've been giving him. Exactly. So he's coming to me for more advice and a little bit of help on his writing. Okay. I believe that you have to be like the most high. The most high doesn't give up on anybody. And like Chosen says, even though that relationship may go dormant, it's not dead. It's not over. Okay. And I believe that if you wait on people long enough, they will snap back to their senses and they will eat up everything you taught them and come back for more. Mm. And the only thing, like my mother used to say, you need some fire put up under you, you know, to make you move. I did the first two years. That didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's what people, 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 uh, the, the right people around you will put their fire under you. You can go somewhere and you'll see people like me. I'm the type of person, if I see people doing stuff um, and they're going towards, you know, they're going on the same journey that I'm going and I see them do the same thing that I do. I kind of get, it, it makes me excited. Like I get excited, not just for them, but then I get excited to, to keep doing what it is that I do. But you know what? This is the one thing, this is one thing I wanted to say too. When people do give up, I understand why. Cause it's so much mm. easier to lay down. It's so much easier to lay down. You ever had a headache? And and, and and it just feels like when you lay down, the headache just, it's like, it's less, if not gone. Mm -hmm. You lay down, I'm just gonna lay here. I'm just gonna lay here. Cause if I move, a little rest, then- A little so, slumber and poverty will overtake you like a bandit. <laughs> yes. We so, and then because it's- A little rest, a little slumber and poverty will overtake you like a bandit. Isn't that scripture? Yep. I thought so. Okay, go ahead, so, Chosen. Yeah. I mean, and he, and he right. It's so much easier to lay down. Like, I could be passionate about anything. I could be mm -hmm. passionate, just like I'm, just like I'm, pa I'm passionate about my music. But it is so easier for me to pick up a controller than it is to write a song. <laughs> I'm serious, because wow. I get up, all I got to do, click Click a button, put, and that's it. It's got it. But to sit down in front of a beat and write a song, it's like, okay, you thinking about this, and you think you can let it flow, but it's so much easier to do that because it's like so. The the one thing that'll cause your stagnation is just being led by something else. We can sit up and watch a whole season of Walking gotcha. Dead or a whole season of something like that because, and and it's and, and sometimes it's not a distraction. It, it, it it's a distraction from what it is you need to do from the task. Yes, I agree. But sometimes, okay. you know, like the only but the only raise only reason why I'm able to drop gems on on, on stuff like that is because there are stories and I see the underlying and meaning and I see it. So I learn from it, too. But the only reason why it's so easy is because it's already wrote out. All I got to do is this. Here. It's all I got to do. And I'm guilty of the same thing. You can over practice that one gift that you're so good at, that you're so easy at, rather than dealing with this one over here that's harder. Uh, dealing with this yeah, one right here, like, like, I don't have the flow. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I'm yeah exactly. So, so, cause like, I'm like, hey, cause like my homeboy, I'll be like, my homeboy, let's say, man, what you been working on, dog? I'll say, dog. And, and, and what he just said, what he said, what you been working on. It's so much easier to, to, to do something that don't involve the challenge it doesn't involve Brain work power. you know what i'm saying so it's like what you been so it's like basically it's it's when you feel like 
your creative juices and their creative flow ain't there. It's like, man, what do I do to get? It's like, dude, if I could trade in the, if I could trade in the simplicity to play a game or watch an anime for the simplicity to create the the, the, the song and getting on this workstation, and just go to it and get it. That's what I'm getting at. It's because 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 a TV show, a video game, or anything is it's you can go to it and get it. Everything is is right there. But whatever it is that you know that you're passionate about, sometimes you gotta wake it up. You got, okay, how do I get this creative process? Unnecessary diversion. Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> we can go there. We can go to unnecessary diversion because no, sometimes saying, we take that, unnecessary. If that's what you, if that's the way you're putting it out, that it's an unnecessary diversion. Yeah, like it's sometimes it's an unnecessary it's diversion. It's not a distraction. Like it. It's a diversion. <laughs> yeah, oh, there you I go. Unnecessary that. diversion. Unnecessary so it's diversion. Like, so so I so I say sometimes whenever you hit that brick wall, that's like the cue for the enemy to hit you with that unnecessary diversion. It's like you hit that brick wall, I just can't get this done. Okay, then you look over there to the right side of your room, and then there go Netflix popped up. What are we watching today? <laughs> <laughs> After you just, <laughs> it's like. It's like, like, I can't get this idea out. Then you look over, and like, what are we watching today? It's like, you just know, don't you? Like, you just knew that I really couldn't get this out. So mm. sometimes you get it to where you hit that brick wall and you like, I can't, I can't. And every time you get up, I can't, I can't, I can't. Then there's something that's, hey, well, we can do this. And you can do that for so long. Doesn't mean that you've given up. It just means that you went into a, you went into a creative coma. Mm. Yeah. Well, see, that's where I come up with hold on to what you have until I come. You, you're going to have that dead space. Like, we're not supposed to have dead air when we're doing the show. But in yeah, life, you're going to you have that have little it. dead space where the only thing exactly. you can do is hold on to what you have, maintain your peace, keep your motivation. Right now, the juices just ain't flowing. But that's today. That's not tomorrow. That's not tomorrow. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for joining Coffee and Convo Houston live with RE and Chosen special guest FB Sparkman. I hope you got something out of today's show and understand that as, a, as we've all stated today, it's problem solving, discipline. And what is the last, what am I missing here? Problem solving, discipline, Don't perseverance. Don't perseverance. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Have a lovely day. God bless. God bless.